Cameron, your struggle is with the sin of same-sex attraction. You're facing the consequences of your actions, and it's ugly. Now you're officially a disciple of God's promise. Welcome. <sighs> Fuck. The Miseducation of Cameron Post is an assured second feature from writer, director, and actor Desiree Akavan, previously known for her debut feature, Appropriate Behaviour, as well as her performances in things like Girls by Lena Dunham. Comparing Cameron Post to Appropriate Behaviour, it becomes clear that the film is very much less punchy in its cinematography and its editing, and also less punch-liney. It's definitely a drama, although it does have some comedic elements. But that's not to say it's less poppy. It's got lots of music in the soundtrack, ranging from Christian rock to dream pop, and all of that serves to situate it very clearly in a kind of American independent milieu of cinema. It's also a less personal story too. In fact, it's kind of hard to imagine without doing a straight autobiography how much more personal appropriate behavior could have been for Desiree Akhavan. She's a bisexual Iranian American filmmaker who in that case made a film about a bisexual Iranian American woman. In The Miseducation of Cameron Post, she's drawing on some personal experiences, particularly the LGBT themes, but this film is less personal. And you could be forgiven for thinking that as a result, it might be less well observed or more detached from the, from the, the themes of the film. However, Akavan's focus on the details of a scene on gestures and body language means that this film still feels very much real and grounded in lived experience, even if her experiences don't exactly line up with the experiences of the main characters. It helps that the cast of the film is phenomenal, featuring a really well thought through ensemble of young actors with Chloe Grace Moretz at the lead. She's been in the industry for so long that it's easy to think of her as a child actor with maybe a limited range. She's very mature in terms of how she approaches this performance, and it's a really well executed look at a very conflicted young woman. It's not a big performance like it maybe could have been, with lots of crying and shouting. Instead, she opts to focus on small looks and expressions, um, and working with Akavan, she manages to sell a lot of really complex emotions with a very limited set of, of actions. One great example is actually in the trailer where Cameron realizes that her guardian is gonna make her sign the contract to stay at this gay conversion therapy camp. She just does one long look at her guardian and that's how they do basically that whole emotional beat. And I think in lesser hands, in, in lesser hands both from the director and from the actor, it might not have worked, but here it really drives home that emotional feeling. The other two nominal leads, Sasha Lane from American Honey and Forrest Goodluck from The Revenant are also excellent in their performances, approaching characters with a sort of wit, but also with a maturity and a psychological complexity that makes them work on screen. There's lots of other interesting turns in the ensemble cast, like the Vikings-obsessed roommate of Cameron, or the straight-laced guy in her support group who has a very complex relationship with his dad. When I first heard the plot of this film, I was very much reminded of the 1990s queer comedy But I'm a Cheerleader, directed by Jamie Babbitt with Claire Duval and RuPaul. That film had a very different approach to its subject matter, taking quite a difficult topic, the same thing, uh, gay cure camps for teenagers, and translating it into this sort of John Waters hellscape that was super kitsch and campy. Obviously Cameron Post takes a very different approach, it's clearly more naturalistic in its cinematography, but it's also more psychologically realistic in terms of how it portrays the characters within it. And one thing that I thought in particular was excellent about the film was the lengths that they went to to explicitly explain and depict the sort of justifications that the people who run these camps have for what they do. There's two people who run the camp. There's a doctor, a therapist, and then there's a, uh, in the parlance of these groups, an ex-gay youth pastor who works with them, who is her brother. In one scene, the therapist character is talking to Cameron and says, you know, homosexuality doesn't exist. There's just same-sex attractions, which are a sin, and we wouldn't have parades for drug addicts, would we? explicitly equating the two. It's that kind of explanation of the thinking behind these ideas that make fictional films about real problems like this really valuable. The brother youth pastor character is also a really interesting one because he gets two solo interaction scenes with Cameron where they're really able to dig down into the idea that although this guy is a perpetrator of these cruel and kind of evil things, he's also a victim of them to an extent because he's been forced to swallow the same kind of brainwashing that they're pushing. And here's where Akavan's focus on gesture and body language and the coded ways in which we refer to things in society really comes into its own because she starts examining the performative nature of religion and in particular how these camps don't really cure people as they say they do, but instead just 
help them navigate passing in the communities that they're part of. When Cameron is given a iceberg drawing, where she basically has to line out all the thoughts and actions that led to her becoming a homosexual or experiencing same-sex attractions, as they call it, which is such a nuts exercise because, of course, how do you explain what you are? She goes around the rooms of the other kids and looks at what they put on their drawings just so she can get ideas for what to put onto hers. She's not really engaging with it. She's just learning how to pass their tests and kind of pretend to be straight enough to be let back into society. It's in scenes like that where Akravan is able to really contribute to the dialogue around these places and hopefully help people articulate why they don't work in a better way. An assured second feature from a promising writer, director, actor who has a growing body of work behind her, both in terms of what she's written and directed and also what she's starred in. The Miseducation of Cameron Post deals with really difficult issues in a clever and accessible way that will hopefully inform the debate and opinions around those issues. And not only that, it's really well executed with a great cast. In other words, it's exactly the kind of film that you should be going to watch at your local cinema. That's it from me, but I'd love to hear about your opinions on the themes and content of the film, as well as how it's executed and what Akavan's other work is like, maybe. Do let me know in the comments down below if you've seen the movie and you want to have a chat about it. That's it from me. Bye for now.